Hey everybody, Matthew here. Today we're gonna be talking everything Fender, hopefully answering some of your questions you sent in, and also taking a second look at this American Vintage Series 2 Stratocaster. Let's check it out. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. I have to start today by acknowledging the passing of the great Jeff Beck. Sadly, it seems he passed away unexpectedly. He was still out there touring and playing. Uh, so it really sucks, but um, I think he'll be remembered as one of the greatest guitar players ever. And, you know, clearly we've seen over the past week how many players were influenced by him. So that's been really incredible. But today I hope to answer some questions for you guys that were sent in over on Instagram. If you wanna follow me there and be a part of the next Q&A, uh, you can follow me at MatthewScott92. I'd really appreciate that. A lot of the questions were Fender and Stratocaster related, so uh, I thought I'd cover that today and also take a second look at this American Vintage Series 2 Stratocaster, play this guitar a little bit. Uh, I've had it for a few months and uh, it's really a great guitar for the money, so uh, I'm gonna play it again and, and we'll check it out and, and see how it does. Um, but I get a lot of questions about my setup on my strats, which probably is something for a much longer thorough video, but also what specs do I prefer? What's my opinion on it? Um, and this guitar, for example, has seven and a quarter fretboard radius, and this would be accurate for uh, vintage Fender strats and tellies, et cetera. And People often complain about this fretboard radius being too round, um, and this is, you know, based on a design that's 70 years old now. And it begs the question: Why does Fender continue to produce these instruments that are vintage spec down to the last detail? And I think, um, you know, the the long story short is that people are interested in them. People continue to buy them. Um, but I do agree there are a few adjustments that could be made to, to modernize it or to make them play a little bit better, but it does depend on the guitar. Uh, I tried to demonstrate in the intro to this video that even with seven and a quarter radius and pretty small frets, uh, you can still bend and, and do whatever you want on this guitar. I didn't ever feel like it was fighting me. It never fretted out on me at all. Um, so, you know, if you have a big question about that, yes, you can still get away with seven and a quarter radius. Now on my 59, for example, this has really become my number one Strat. Um, it has a little bit flatter radius and a lot of times vintage guitars will be played so much that they, the fretboard will start to level out a little bit, even become scalloped almost because of the fret wear into the fretboard. We've seen that in some of the guitars I've uh, worked on here, like that Melody Maker from last week. So this guitar is a little flatter radius. It also has Jeskar 6100 nickel frets that I put on here. And this is kind of my go-to setup. Um, and, and I also play this guitar in a specific way. You know, I, I would lean more into lead type licks with this setup. Uh, and, and this would be my, my preference, but, but like I say, it also depends on what style you wanna play and how a certain guitar influences you. For example, like a, uh, a 50s Maple Neck Strat or Tele is gonna have a seven and a quarter radius. And you know, that's something that, that I'd wanna leave alone. They typically have bigger necks and inspire you to play a different way than that guitar would. So that's kind of the way I look at guitars. And um, you know, you don't always have to copy what someone else is doing. Uh, try different things out and see what feels best for you. And also keep in mind how you wanna use that guitar, what kind of style of music are you gonna play? If you have something like this, even though it is a 70 year old design, except for a five way switch, Fender chose to change that on this guitar and a little taller fret, it's still, you know, the original 
design of the Stratocaster. So it does have its limitations, but you know, you can find a way to do whatever you want with it. I actually went back and looked because Fender used to have a series, I think called the Hot Rod series, and they were a slightly modified vintage spec guitar. And I think that was a really cool design. I always wanted one of those, but I never, I don't think I ever ended up having one. Um, and then I think Fender released an American original series. I think that's what was right before this, the vintage series two guitars. And those had a nine and a half inch radius too. I'm, I'm curious um, if any of you guys out there have, have played those, what you think about them. Uh, but then they, they went back to full on vintage spec with this guitar. So it's interesting, but um, like I say, obviously people still wanna buy them. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. If you wanna drop a comment on this video and let me know what do you prefer for a radius on a Fender guitar. Uh, or maybe your fret preference as well. And like I say, if you wanna be a part of the next Q&A on Instagram, you can follow me at MatthewScott92. Occasionally I do go live on there. I, I maybe need to do that more, or maybe I need to just go live here on YouTube. I, I haven't made that jump yet, but uh, if you guys wanna see that, you can let me know in the comments. I'm gonna play this guitar out and just have a little bit of fun with it. Um, I've actually been playing with a little less reverb. I, I've gotten that comment a lot. Uh, I guess some people don't like it. And uh, so I've tried playing with a, with a little less reverb and I actually kind of like it. So um, we'll see how that sounds. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode, all right? Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.